We've got some hands raised. I want to answer these questions. Sister Callie, go right ahead. Hi, Pastor. How are you? I'm blessed, darling. Okay. I have a few questions, but I'm going to try to put them all in one. How about that? Okay. Okay. So, good. Uh, okay. I've been, I study the kingdoms just to learn about the kingdom. Somehow I did that. So we're going to be like in a hierarchy. Is that correct? Everybody Absolutely. So not everybody's going to be doing the same. <clears throat> and then. You're right. Matter of fact, we'll be teaching on that in the next part of this lesson. So I know you've been very busy and I know you didn't, you did not send me the teaching about the husband and wife. However, that's fine. I have a, a question together with that. So when the time comes and let's say we're still alive and we go up and we, we're going to be part of the kingdom, what's going to happen, happen with the family that we have here now that would yeah. not finish with them? Yeah. You will know as you're known. We're not, you're going to know each other just as you were known. And I'll do a teaching. The only reason I didn't respond about the husband and the wife, because I'm up, I'm updating my teaching on that subject. I've received some more revelation from the Lord on it. And so I'm going to do a whole teaching on families in the resurrection. So you, that, that will answer your questions, Callie. And the other one is, um, the angels, because you say they're going to go through judgment like us. Are, yes. Do they have um, the choice of repentance or they cannot repent? That is a debatable question. Now, we know that the fallen angels, uh, they have been assigned to the lake of fire. However, what's going to happen at their judgment, no man knows. That's a question I cannot answer. Because they are going to court for a reason. Now, I believe that they will lose their case at court. Because remember, the one that starts the crime carries the greater penalty for the crime. For example, if I induce you to go murder someone, your sentence is going to be lighter than mine. Because I induced you. I started. I'm the mastermind. These are the masterminds of sin. And what is their argument going to be at court? Their argument's going to be all we did was disobey God. And Callie disobeys God every day. All we did was rebel. And all of the Christian church lives in rebellion. So how can you send us to hell? That's going to be their argument. And okay. then Yahweh is going to point to a great cloud of witnesses that did obey God, Enoch, Noah, Elijah, and hopefully Callie. <laughs> okay, awesome. And the last one, but uh, together with that. So after the 1,000 years, the, then the Satan comes loose again. Are we, are we going to still have the kingdom of Yeshua at that moment? Governing over the demons? I didn't quite understand. Okay, after the 1,000 years. After, say, okay. Yeah, you say that um, Satan will be back out. Well, the Correct. Bible's he, the Bible. he comes out for a very short season to test the faith of the millennial saints. Go ahead. Yeah, but we, so we I mean, we, Joshua and the kingdom are going to still reign over that, yes. at that time. Okay. But but they will be allowed to deceive the millennial saints just like they were allowed to deceive you to test their faith to see whether they will be in the eternal kingdom of God. Okay. Okay. Thank Amen. you. Pastor. I love Thank you. you. Can't wait to see y'all for Passover. All right, Sister Camry, go right ahead. Hi. Um, hello, darling. Hi. Hello. Um, I love that piano behind you. Oh, I love music. Like, I just, I like to sing with a choir that, um, wow. uh, that's near me. Uh, we're not singing right now just because they, I believe that they've surrendered to the whole COVID tyranny, yep. you know, scandemic bullcrap yep. thing. Um, You're like safe they wanted here. To, they wanted me to wear a mask at a concert 
but the concert has been canceled. But I'm not wearing a mask. Like good that's, for you. No. Good for but, you. But yeah, anyway. Um. So I don't know if this is like straight up related to what we're talking about now but like we kind of touched on it a little bit in the lesson okay is jesus okay so i right now as of now like i haven't like watched or seen the powerpoint of your teaching on the trinity oh okay um, <laughs> but you're opening up a can of worms i love it, bro. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but like right now <laughs> as of now i do believe that there is one god Yes. And he exists as Yahweh the Father, Yeshua the Son, and the Holy Spirit all at once. Well, well, well. I don't, huh? I said, well, well, well. Go ahead. Okay. Like, I don't believe they're like three separate entities or anything like that. Like, well, you can't um, believe, you can't believe, well, never mind. I, you can't no, believe, ahead. you can't believe he exists as all three and then believe that they're not. I tell you what, let's do this. I've avoided this subject for a while with this class because I've been building trust, but I am neither Trinitarian nor oneness. Okay. Okay. God gave me a revelation years ago of who he was and who his son was. And I can tell you right now that I'm going to teach on it real soon. How about that? But just okay. um, the Trinity is a lie. And what you just expressed that you believe he exists in all three is Trinitarian doctrine. And okay. so it was created by the Catholic Church at the Council of Nicaea because they didn't yeah. know how to explain it. So uh, I do have a video on YouTube about the Trinity and you can watch it. But I've never really taught on what I do believe about okay. the Father and the Son, and I will get to it eventually one of these days, but it to me, it's life-changing revelation. It truly is, and uh, thank you for being with us today, Camry. Um, yeah. yeah, go you're ahead. Welcome. Um, I was just going to say, basically, I don't think I asked the question, though. I just okay. told you. Okay, go ahead. I, so basically, you're saying, okay, is so is Jesus not God then? Okay, so what I'm saying is that... <clears throat> We let's let's put that off until I can teach on it verse by verse, <laughs> because <Okay. clears throat> if I answer your question, it sets me up to not be able to explain my answer. To explain okay, yeah. my answer, to explain my answer is going to take two hours. Okay. Oh. <laughs> verse verse by verse, layer by layer, and. Um, Let's just say this. You and I agree on one thing right now. There is okay. one God. And yeah. that God's name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Yeah. We believe in one creator. I take that back. Mm -hmm. There are many gods. The Bible says so. Oh. But there is, okay, one, okay. There, there is one creator. There is one father. There is one creator. His name mm -hmm. is Yahweh. Yahweh. Amen. And nothing yeah. else that nothing else that claims to be God is a real creator God. Right. They are simply super beings. I tell you what, um, Camry, go watch my yeah. lesson I did yesterday called the Real Cabal. Right. Yeah, I watched that yesterday. Okay. Actually. Well, that I talks about the it. other gods. Okay. So that's kind of interesting, though, because I. You know, I was like, okay, Christianity is a monotheistic religion, which means that we believe in one God. So I just kind of like denied the existence of other gods. Right. But that's no, there's, interesting. That the Apostle Paul said there's gods aplenty. But huh. the, pr the problem we run into, Camry. Okay, let me explain this to everybody. If you're going to have a okay. debate with me or anybody else, no debate is good. Without a clarification of terms. Right. I have to I have to know what you mean when you say the word God. Okay? Yeah. yeah. When I say the word God, I'm speaking in its most basic definition, an object of worship. Okay. Well, if a God is an object of worship, then money is a God. Right. Okay. 
So before we can say there's only one God, we have to say, now, what do you mean when you say that word? What? See, there must be a clarification of terms. Yeah, define your terms. Define your terms. Anytime I go into a debate, the first thing I do is I say, let us clarify our terms. Okay, so when you yeah. say, Brother Vaughn, do you believe Jesus is God? Or do you believe, then I'll make you clarify what you mean by that. And then I'll say, now, are you asking me, is Jesus the Father? Or are you asking me, is Jesus divine? God. The word God is divine. So I'm going to make you clarify what you mean. I'm not going to let you back me in a corner. I'm talking to anybody. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So great questions, and we will get to them very soon. Everybody, okay. remind me to mention my health before I leave today. I want to talk to you all about my health. All right, Brother um, Marlon Hoover. Hey, brother. How are you? I'm blessed. Now, listen, everybody, I'm not going to get any, any more Trinity oneness conversations today because it's, it, it's too complicated. So go ahead, Brother Marlon. Okay. I just wanted to remind you uh, at the beginning, you were talking about animals and you said about reminding you about that. Okay, good. But my question is this. I have heard uh, for many, many years uh, through the church that uh, Yeshua came and died for us on the cross but after listening to you and studying the word and from genesis all the way to revelation it has uh everything to do with the torah the law and from what i'm reading when yeshua was here he was being persecuted by the pharisees and that because he was preaching other doctrine, but yet he wasn't. He was preaching the Torah, right. which was the opposite of what they wanted. So when Yeshua was persecuted, he did not die for us. He died for the law. And That's right. he came to set us free from bondage by the example that he left by showing us the law. Am I correct on that? I'm going to say you're 98%. Um, okay. That's a high number. That's a high number. I don't believe it's fair to say that he didn't die for us because we were the end goal. We were the, our redemption was, let's say he did, let's say that's not, the means by which he died. Right. He died for what you're saying, for teaching the true Torah of Yahweh. As a matter of fact, Brother Marlin, if anybody was to go play today's lesson to their pastor, where I called, I'll fly away demonic, they would crucify me in their pulpit in the morning by name. They would. Okay, so I would die for teaching the original Torah, the original word of God. Everybody watching me, send this to your pastor. In the morning, they'll have my picture on the screen and they will call me demonic because I came against us going to heaven. I'll fly away. But I'm teaching you what God's word taught you and I'll challenge any pastor. I'll donate $1,000 to their church I'll do it today. I'm ready. I got the money in my cash app. I'll send it if they can disprove me. I don't say that pridefully. I'm begging someone. I've been begging for years. No one accepts the offer because they cannot do it. So, Brother Marlin, what you're saying is correct. He died because he did teach the correct Sabbath. They were teaching a perverted Sabbath. Yeah. They were teaching a Sabbath that nobody could keep, really. It was a burden. It was a nightmare. They couldn't even walk past so many feet on the Sabbath day. And Yahshua said, that's not the Sabbath that my father instituted. He instituted a glorious Sabbath, a delight, and you've turned it into a burden. So they killed him for preaching the original word of God. Very good, Brother Marlin. You're welcome. Thank you. Love you, brother. Brother Landon, Kirk, good morning. Good morning. Um, so I have a different Bible that I use other than the book of uh, Yahweh. Yes, sir. Thought, this was like a little cool thing I saw. So in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, 
where it says in whom the mighty one of this world you guys have the word world but mine actually has the word age excellent that's good then what translation is that uh, it's called the hallelujah scriptures i've got that one right up here somewhere oh. yeah i've got the hallelujah scriptures very good brother landon i love you buddy i can't wait to see you soon Brother Don Robbins. Hello, Pastor from Utah. Just wanted to say thank you for serving up healthy portions of the Word of God to the eagles that are Ooh. watching and listening. Hallelujah. I also, I also wanted to talk about, um, you had that um, teaching the other day about um, Moses and the, um, the cross where they held up the stake and the people looked at it. Yes. They were healed. Yes. I, I had a, a thought about that, and it's kind of a question that I wanted you to touch on. You said that that represented Jesus Christ, and that it made me start to think: Was Jesus not crucified on a cross, but on a stake? Oh, absolutely. And, and if, I agree if with that. Look, and if you look at the definition of a cross, yep. uh, the Hebrew is sturos. If I'm pronouncing it correctly, right. which means. Mm -hmm. Which means steak. And I just wanted to share that with everybody. You're Thank absolutely you. right. For all that you do. Appreciate it. Come to Utah. Thank you. And you stay safe in Utah from the LDS folks now. Oh, it's a, it's a struggle. I'm surrounded. <laughs> no, but you're right. Jesus did die on a steak with his hands uplifted. Um, but anyway, we'll get with that later. Next, I'm going to answer some more questions for Rachel D. Strang, Holly Edmonds, Keith and Laura Moran, and Carolyn and Shelly Todd. All right, Sister Rachel, bless you this morning. Hello, Pastor. Good evening. How Good morning you? or evening. <laughs> we'll be praying uh, for your uh, Thank you. successful surgery. And so um, according to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 49 to 55, uh, it says that in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, we shall be changed from incorruptible to corrupt. Uh, corruptible to incorruptible. So is that uh, before the millennial kingdom? Oh, yes. Yes, ma'am. That will be at the second coming of Christ. That will be when you're resurrected from the grave or when your body's changed. At the seventh trumpet of God is when that will happen. That's the beginning of the seventh day. Okay. So is that also what we call the glorified body? Yes. It's the spiritual body the glorified body, and I have a whole teaching on the glorified body. If you want to go find it, it's on YouTube, and it's called, Is Yahweh Invisible? I think that might be what it's called. Y'all, I've done so many teachings now. Let me go see if I can look it up for you. Uh, Shane Vaughn, Yahweh Invisible. Let's see if that's it. Yeah, there it is. No, it's called Shane Vaughn Teaches. Is Yahweh invisible? What is the new body? There we go. Uh, well, I reckon are I can get a link for you. Are we going to still commit sin in a glorified body or no more? Say it one more time. I'm so sorry. Can we be able to commit sin in a glorified body? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No. Here's why. That is such a powerful question. As a matter of fact, that video teaches why you cannot sin in the new body. Uh so I tell you what, just watch that because that answers your question, okay? Okay, thank you, Pastor. <clears throat> Bless you and thank you. Where are you from, darling? I'm originally from the Philippines, but I'm living here in Saudi Arabia. Oh, Saudi Arabia? The gospel of the kingdoms in Saudi Arabia today. Oh, praise Yahweh. Thank you for watching me. What time is it there? It's already 9.26 p.m. 9.26 p.m. Wow. Well, why don't you spread the message through Saudi Arabia? Get us some more followers there. Thank you so much. Amen, Pastor. Amen. All right. Go ahead, Sister D. Strang. I know y'all. I saw you not long ago. Yay. We, we, we met you in Lebanon, Tennessee. We're in I Tennessee. remember. Wonderful. Jamie and my yeah. husband, Dave. Good to see you this morning, brother. Okay, here's, um, we're praying for you too. That's Thank just, you. 
That choked us up a little bit. Oh, thank you, darling. A whole lot. Okay, um, I, earlier today, I was in your um, atonement. Um, no, thank you. Um, so I was listening earlier uh, to your celebrating the Day of Atonement on YouTube. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm 24-7 watching you. Okay, and you had something in there, um, or talking about how Paul tells us to pray for all men that the Father will draw them by the Holy Spirit to himself, yes. correct? Yes. Says, pray for them. Now, here's, here's because all of us, we just get so slammed with, what, you, what, when is you, the Sabbath day, all this kind of stuff, they make fun of us. Right. And he said, um, so pray for these people, and you say, don't teach them, um, that, you know, pray for them, right? Right. But how, and we know that they're being drawn in by the Holy Spirit okay. when they start asking us questions, and sometimes yes. that may look like they're like making fun of us. Sure. But, so here was my question. I started. How do we answer without teaching? I know we okay. pray, not we don't convince. But how, how, with anything, how do we do that? Have you ever heard the old yeah. saying? Have you ever heard the old saying? It's not what you say; it's how you say it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The first thing I do when somebody asks me a question about the Sabbath day, or I tell you what, I was at a table not long ago, and all they had was crawfish. It was a crawfish boil, and all they had was crawfish, sausage, potatoes, and corn, right? Well, I'm sitting at the table with everybody because I'm not one of those people that walks in with the sign of the cross over the crawfish, you know, acting crazy. I don't act religious. I don't act super religious. I sit at the table, talked, cut up, and I ate the corn. Somebody noticed that I was just eating corn. And they, they asked me a sincere question. And they said, why are, you, why are you just eating the corn? I could tell it was not making fun of me. I discerned their question by the Spirit. Mm, yeah. Now, this is your primary challenge. To be able to discern from what source that question is coming from. Because I've been at other, and by the way, I answered their question in front of the whole table and Yahweh used that moment and I looked around the table and everyone was staring at me, listening, really listening to me. I've been asked that same question at other tables and I knew it was a mocking question because they would be like, Oh, I bet you'd like some of this crawfish, wouldn't you? You know what I do? I laugh right along with them and I keep going to the next subject because I will never cast these pearls before swine. That's good. Okay? So I yeah. encourage you when you hear a question, ask the Father. You and the Father can talk right up here without opening your mouth. Ask the Father, is this a sincere question? Don't be trapped. But if it's a sincere question, you better have your answers ready. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Thank you now, so much. At that point, you can start teaching them why they opened the door. Oh, wow. That's okay? good. Thank if you, you so If much. you try to teach them without an open door, you'll make a mockery out of this truth. Amen? Amen. It's like going up Thank to one of your so children. Much. It's like going up to one of your children that are addicted to crack or alcohol and trying to convince them they need to go to church. How's that conversation going to wind up? Like it always does, because I've tried it. <laughs> and they hear a Charlie Brown, wah, 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 wah. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Thank you so much. We love you all over in Tennessee. And there's another Tennessee girl, Sister Holly Edmonds. Good morning, Holly yeah. Good morning. You look like you're living the good life. Oh my gosh. So Yola has blessed us this past week with beautiful weather. I've just been oh. sitting out there listening to the birds and it's been wonderful. Um, I just, I, I've just been heavy on my heart for the past time. I'm not, you know, I'm just coming into this truth. I'm sorry. I get tearful. But, you know, this is all so new. And I've, I've been in church my whole life in a Pentecostal background such as yourself. Yes, ma'am. I feel like I've just been lied to. 
and it's just like no because I've raised my kids that are now teenagers and my husband who don't understand I'm barely understanding myself oh. so I don't know like am I gonna like what what can I do because I want us all to rule and reign in the kingdom of Yahweh and that just it breaks my heart so I just wanted to ask you like besides praying and I mean I'm not even there myself yet I'm just, the Lord is just starting to reveal these things that you teach to me wow it just is really heartbreaking and disturbing to me, and, and I don't want my kids, you know, and my husband, I'm just asking you, is there anything else I could do besides pray, and, and this is for me, so it's hard for me to understand, let alone them, I do good to get them to youth group and church the way we were taught, you understand sure. what I'm saying? Sure, keeping, so, them in, keeping them involved in activities, I yes. know, I know. So, Holly, first of all, the heart you have, the Father loves that heart. And I want to say this to you. You can accomplish more with your husband and with your children in your love and patience for them than you ever will trying to convince them of this message. Listen to me. As the Father teaches it to you, live it. Just live it. And as you live it, they will notice. And then they will ask you a question. And what happens is you're given a chance to drop a seed of truth. And you know what, Holly? They may even laugh that seed of truth off. They may make light of it. And you think, wow, but you dropped a seed. Never underestimate the power of a seed, Holly. Never. Every time you do the right thing in front of your children, every time you do the right thing, you've dropped that seed. And then you pray over the seed. And you ask the Father, draw my husband, draw my children, pray it every day, pray it every night, and then live it in front of them. Let them see you on Friday night. Light a candle in your home. Let them see you make that evening special. And then let them ask, whoa, what's going on? Well, it's Yahweh's Sabbath. Yeah. You don't even have to come in the house and say, okay, right now the Sabbath begins. Everybody stop. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I'm used to doing things. <laughs> I, I, well, I know, right? But make it beautiful and put on a little worship music and then let them just let them see the beauty of the Sabbath. Take them out on Saturday to a nature trail. Uh, go see God's creation. Get out on a fishing boat. Make the Sabbath super special for them. Make them love the Sabbath. Prepare a meal. I know the uh, choirs are watching right now. And they have a tradition at their home every Friday night at sunset. They serve, they've been doing it for years, spaghetti. That's their Sabbath meal. The whole family looks forward to spaghetti. They met, sh This mother made her children love the Sabbath because they love spaghetti. <laughs> so create those traditions. And then when you go out to eat and everybody's ordering, Ask the waiter, now, does that have pork? Does that have, and that's all you got to say. And your children will begin to hear you. I started with the pork. Good. I bring turkey, bacon, and stuff home. And they eat it. Good. And by the way, ground turkey, uh, I used, instead of ground pork, I use a lot of ground turkey. Now, I make ground turkey tacos, and they are divine. So, just start making that change, Sister Holly, and then pray over them. And we're going to add them to our prayer list. Everybody watching me, I want you to add the Edmonds family, that God will bring that whole family into the ways of Israel. And then, Holly, whatever you have to do, I know you have persuasion over your husband and your children. When it comes time for the festivals, I don't care if you got to go borrow the money, you get them to the holy festivals. We are, Every we're, year, we're, gonna, we're planning. Uh, I can, we can't come down there this year. I wanted to, but maybe in sure. June. But we're going to. Uh, we're doing Passover. Uh, meet Mary Ann. Uh, we're Good. having a Passover up here. So excellent. Well, that's perfect. You don't have to come here if y'all can do it there, but do it, okay? And then, but now the Feast of Tabernacles. Every year, you need to gather with the whole house of Israel if you can okay. in Alabama when we 
that that is the tabernacles is meant to be a huge gathering of oh, the yeah, house of Israel. Here, we we'll I know you did. I know you did. All right. I love you, Holly. Bless you. All right. We're going to do, folks, I'm getting a little weak over here. So we're going to do three or four more and then we'll have to go. Brother Keith and Sister Laura from Indiana. Hi, Hi Pastor. Pastor. Hello. <laughs> we're really uh, looking forward to coming down for Passover next month. We are so excited. It's going to be our vacation. Yes. Yay. We're looking forward to meeting you and everybody. And Courtney. Sit, sister Courtney. And yes. By the ocean. <laughs> There's no ocean up here. <laughs> okay. Well, you will love our ocean. We have beautiful That's beaches. Corn, we got, we, got, corn. we got corn. We got corn. <laughs> well, bring me corn. I love corn. I, uh, um, I want to apologize for my question in advance, but with uh, us being on the doorway of, at the doorstep of a possible nuclear war and our friend uh, Lindsey Graham poking the bear, for lack of a better term, um, where do the three and a half years of tribulation fit in if we know that Yeshua's return will be, um, when do we say the Feast of Trumpets in the fall? Right. Um, <laughs> would that exclude 2022 as, you know, this year or, you know? Christ, <clears throat> that's a great question. Christ Christ is not returning for for. I would say, I mean, I truly believe that the Messiah will be returning according to what I understand about the scriptures. We've still, I'm going to say 10 years at least. And there's a reason for that. You've got to have the seven years of tribulation. Right. Okay. Right. He doesn't return till, till after that. All right. So. But I do believe right now, if we go into this third nuclear war, this world war, that seven years, that, that begins. That, 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 you know, now we may very well be in the minor part of great tribulation right now. No one really can know that. But if it's the case, then there's only three and a half years of great tribulation that would start with nuclear weapons and World War Three. So I know. That, that we are at the point now where something's fixing to break. And it's going to be a great tribulation that is coming. Listen, Putin, I believe, has been taken over by Nephilim spirits. Agreed. I really believe that. Someone said yesterday the president of Finland is personal friends with Putin. And he said... That Putin is changing right before his eyes. Something is going on. I believe everything's coming in place. I believe I will see the return of the Lord in my lifetime. I really believe that. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. We love you folks. See y'all in 30 days. Sister Carolyn Brown, welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for all the prayers. I appreciate it. Amen. We're glad you made it through COVID. Yeah, it was a rough one, but God, thank God. Amen. Um, and I'll be praying for you as well. But thank you. I had a couple of questions, and then one of them was, what you, you answered Miss Holly's question. That's part of mine as well. Yes, Thank you for that. Um, please keep my family in prayers because I had just taught my grandkids all of what I've been taught all my life. And now, yes, you know, just getting them to understand it, I have to change everything on them. So trying wow. to do that is, is a challenge as well. I feel that. But, um, I feel that. I feel that. I feel that, Carolyn. You and I grew up. I mean, you know my grandmother. There's no greater yeah. saint. There's no greater saint of God in the world. My right. grandmother's what? My grandmother's your aunt? Yeah, that's daddy's, my daddy's sister, Aunt Lois. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know that her reward in the kingdom of God is going to be great, even though she doesn't understand even the things that I teach. Yeah. Because you know why? She was faithful to her message, Carolyn. Her message was get everyone saved and feel with the Holy Ghost. You yeah. know? 
And she was faithful. She's been faithful to that. There will be a reward for that faithfulness. Now, what you've got to do now is you and I, are, we're living in another day than my grandmother has lived in. We're yeah. hearing a new message, another message. And it's not contradicting the old. It's just clarifying the old. And so you just start living it, Carolyn, day by day, little by little. Just start. I tell you what, if y'all want to start living this in front of your family, start changing the smallest parts of your speech. Instead of saying God, start saying Yahweh. Yahweh. Instead of Jesus, start saying Yahshua. And watch the interesting conversations that that will lead to. Okay. Just small changes. Whenever you pray over your meal tonight, just blow them all out the water. And say, Father, we thank you for this meal. Let it strengthen and nourish our bodies. And we pray in the name of your son, Yahshua. And then everybody's like, who? <laughs> and you say, well, as I've been studying the Hebrew culture, I found out that his mother called him Yahshua. And the angel called him Yahshua. So I really like that name. I really like, and that's all you have to tell them. You never have to say, oh, we can't say the name Jesus no more. God, no, we're going to go to hell. No, no, don't be foolish with this message. Yeah. Make it beautiful. I love the name Jesus. I was saved under the name of Jesus. I was baptized in the name of Jesus. Jesus has healed my body many times. There's nothing wrong with that name, but there's nothing wrong with kindergarten either. I just don't want to go back there. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. You see what I'm um, saying? Yeah, thank you so much for all of that. But um, the other thing is, I just wanted to, you know, let you know that you've answered so many questions that I've had, you know, throughout wow. my life um, in this new teaching, you know, the new knowledge <laughs> that God's bringing to us. Or yeah, yes. Um, and, you know, one of them was like, you know, the dead in Christ shall rise, you know, when he comes back. But yes. then yet they always tell me that, no, when they die, they go to heaven. And that never right. made sense to me. So yes, thank you for that. But um, the other question is, is like, I've had a um, situation in my life um, where you was talking about, you know, always obey your husband. Well, when it sure. comes to the ties, you know, I had a situation. I don't know if anybody else has ever experienced this, but I promise you they have. Where the husband did not agree with that and, right. you know, did not want me to do it and said if I did, that he would cut off, you know, okay. what he was putting in toward the family. Great. You know, well, first of all, so, let me address you know, that well, because you, you bring up an important point that needs to be addressed. The husband is the head of the home, okay? Let me, let me, how, to, how many, if you've, heard, if you've heard me teach on the Constitution, I teach about an illegal president and a legal president. For example, the mask mandates were not law. They were not legal. They were not legitimately the law of the land. As long as a mandate does not violate the Constitution, my freedom of religion, then I'll go with it, okay? When a husband says you cannot, you cannot pay the tithe, he is the head of the home. You will not be responsible. He will be. When you walk in obedience, then he bears the responsibility of that, not you. So I just want to tell you, don't ever feel bad if you obeyed your husband. However, there is a caveat to that. Any other money that he doesn't provide, let's say maybe you sew on the side, maybe you whatever, and you get your own little money, then tithe on that. If he says you can't tithe on my money, he's the head of the home. Okay? He will answer to God for that, not you. But anything you do, you pay tithe on your money. But he didn't even want me to do that. He, when I started, because I, that's what I was doing, yeah. you know, after I talked to the pastor at that time. Yeah. And, you know, he 
when he found out, you know, that I was paying ties um, on, you know, the money that I earned, then he cut out what I was paying to the church out of, you know, the family money. Here's the conversation all of you wives need to have with your husband. I know I'm, I'm reading some of your comments. Many of you have husbands like this. Someone posted a wonderful scripture just then that I teach all the time. Um, go to your husband and ask him this question. Do you love me? Do you love me? Well, you know I love you. Would you ever ask me to choose between you and my God? Well, no. Tell them, say, when you will not let me tithe, you're asking me to choose you over the law of Yahweh. And I love you and I love Yahweh. What do you suggest I do? Have a real Sounds conversation good. from your heart. I can't tell everyone what to do in their homes. I don't want to break up any homes. But these conversations Come from your heart and let them know. It's just like when I wrote these religious exemption letters about the vaccine mandate for these thousands of people. That's how I wrote the question. I made the employer answer the question. Are you asking me to choose between you and my creator, his commandments? Must I make that choice? And most employers did not force people to make that choice. I don't believe your husband will either. Thank you. You're welcome. I love you, Carolyn. Love you too. Sister Shelly Todd, and then we're going to, I'm probably going to go in just a moment, folks. Sister Shelly Todd. Hi, Pastor. Hello, darling. Um, wow. All these other questions, mine seem so simple, but... <laughs> I hear the, um, the Torah talked about all the time. Now, is that an addition to the book of Yahweh? Or is that something um, that is pretty much the same thing, but in a different? It's the first five books of the Bible. The Torah, that's what those five books are collectively referred to as. And it's not, tech. I'm, that's not a technical answer. I apologize the Torah is contained with it. It's the law that God gave to Moses, but it's written in those first. It's actually called the Tanakh, but the Torah is in those first five books of your Bible. Oh, so then I don't need to go get um, the Torah. No, ma'am. You've already got it. <laughs> I, never, I never knew that because I kept hearing, I'm like, well, maybe I should be reading the Torah too. Well, you should be reading it, but it's just read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, right. the books that Moses wrote. Okay. And um, my daughter found out today that I no longer am a part of the UPC. Yes, ma'am. And um, she totally doesn't understand what's going on. Is there a beginning point? Is there a beginning video? Yes. Not to overwhelm her, but just to yes. introduce her? Yes. Download my e-booklet called What is the True Gospel? That is the starting point. If you can get her to read a little 20-page booklet and say, look, as your mom, do me a favor. Read it and come report back to me what you think about this. Act like you're asking her to judge whether you're going in the wrong direction. Yeah, Say, read, read this for me, okay? Play dumb, yeah. Play dumb. <laughs> dumb is always good. Play dumb and say, I don't want to be misled. Would you read this for me and tell me what you think? And I promise you, the seeds will be planted in her mind. About the coming kingdom okay. of God. And I just want to say, Pastor, it took a long time for all of us to find you. So you are not going anywhere. Amen. I believe that. God bless you. God bless you, sister. And you hurry and come see us real soon. All right. Okay. I'm going to take, I'm going to talk to Sister Irene, Sister Dot, Brother Eric, Brother Arlen, and Sister Kelly. Sister Irene, you're next. In the name of Jesus, 
I take authority over that disease and you, sickness Lord. in your Thank body. You. Hallelujah. Jesus himself said to us that we would set the captives free, heal the brokenhearted, lay hands on the sick, Thank and you, they shall recover, and even raise the dead according to our faith. And Hallelujah. And the woman who gave her money to the doctors that never healed her, yes. her faith in Jesus alone, he said, woman, your faith has made thee well. So right now, he has given us that authority Thank over you, the Father. demons, the scorpions, the diseases, the spirits, yes, all Father. that come to take your life. We say, nay, nay, nay. For Hallelujah. Jesus himself said, you shall be healed. Thank you, Father. And I believe that with everything in me. That Hallelujah. God is healing you even now. Hallelujah. As we speak. And everyone said, Amen. 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 I believe it with every fiber of my being. I receive it right now in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Irene. I stand in full agreement with that prayer. You sound Amen. just like my wife praying for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Yahweh. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Sister Praise Dot. Yahweh. Amen. Hallelujah. I love little Dot over in Atlanta, Georgia. I just want to um, let you know that the God of this world has always wanted you to Thank stop you, you, Thank you in Lord. what you are doing hallelujah i told you last year how i was battling battling with him concerning my health i remember that i remember that and he has been against me since my birth wow I will call those things as if they were new. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you will not die yes, from Father. any of this. Because Yahweh, as he told Job, you can come against him, but you come can't on. take his life. Woo! Hallelujah. I, I felt that. Hallelujah. You will not be afraid of surgery or anything else. Thank you, Father. Thank because you, you got a one in heaven who's already proclaimed that you will be a, 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 a soldier on the battlefield. Ah, uh, hallelujah. You have souls to minister to. Thank you have you, a Father. job to do. And it yes, will be done. Woo! You I don't know if you have... Mm. So therefore, I want to ask everyone on this line. Thank you, Lord. To come together in a spiritual prayer. Yes, Lord. And yes, Lord. pray for the next 30 seconds. Courtney, will you unmute everybody? Amen. Amen. So that Amen. we can come together. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. Lift up your Amen. voice. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Stand ye on the battlefield, and he will not be touched. Come together as one. Come in one spirit. Come calling those things as if they were Claim his life and not his death. Proclaim his healing. Claim this power. Call these things together right now as 
Stand in faith. Faith. Walk to life. Let it for everybody on the front. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I see Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
I was glad when they said unto me, Oh, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, I was glad when they said unto me, oh, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Oh, I love your message, Linnea. She said, I was going to go visit the local church, but I didn't feel well. I stayed home. Yahweh knows. Oh, hallelujah. There's a sweet spirit when the saints of Yahweh come into unity. There's a sweet spirit. This is the way of peace. This is what the kingdom of God will be like right here. Do you feel that sweetness? That's the kingdom of God. It's joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, some glad morning. When this life is over, I'll rule and reign. When this life is over, or oh, when this body's changed, I'll rule and reign. Oh, I'll rule and reign. Oh, glory, I'll rule and reign. I said when this life is over Or oh, when this body's changed I'll rule and reign Oh, I'll rule and reign Oh, glory I'll rule and reign Oh, when this life is over Or oh, when this body's changed I'll rule and reign Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to rule and reign. Amen. Amen. Y'all got to learn how to. Y'all got to learn how to do like Pastor Bonnie and go, Woo! Hallelujah! Glory! That's when you don't know what to say. You just, Woo! Hallelujah! Glory to God! Glory! Oh. Dr. Cole, I see you and Alyssa over there with y'all's reserve selves. I'm going to bring y'all all the way out. Hallelujah! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Glory to God! Oh, I love every one of you so much. I'm real quickly. I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said unto me, "Shall these bones live?" Oh yes. I I go, shut yes. Up. There's two of them. They shall live. Sister Kelly, go right ahead. I'm so sorry. Go oh, ahead, Sister sorry. Kelly. That was beautiful. That was Hallelujah. wonderful. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just wanted to say real quick. 
you, you know, you said uh, at one point, well, you said a few times that uh, you were losing some people, and uh, well, you didn't lose this one. Yes. Well, praise you were God. saying your chastisement and your your loving chastisement, but your correction, yeah, it was for me. Amen. Thank you, it Father. So I love it. Hard to listen to, but sure. in the truth, hard to listen to. So it, it, it didn't fall on deaf ears. That means the world to me, Kelly. Thank you. The Lord loves it when we can take correction. All of us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I really do. Y'all corrected me about them them uh, lucky charms, and I ain't got them yet, yeah, so well, that's well. good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your wife's a real pretty smart lady, sir. So oh, she hides them. She'll hide them. She'll bring me, she brings me super K or something. I don't know what that stuff is. All right. <laughs> Sister Maxine. Hallelujah. What? Hallelujah, Pastor. Hallelujah. 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 Been away for me to get a phone so I can Hallelujah. Praise uh -huh. Yahweh. Uh -huh. I have something for what you up? that was put into the spirit. It was put in there last night and it was put in there. I couldn't answer why. Okay. And then today when you spoke, it told the, the, the Lord came and said to bring you this message. All right. He said to bring it to you. He said that his hands are rising. They are full of bright red roses. As the roses rise up, they begin to burst forth with fire. Wow. He said, tell you as they burst forth, the fire burns out. The blood will fall and the sky in front of you will be as bright and clear as a bell. Mm. Well, I received the word of the Lord. Nothing but clear sky in him. Hallelujah. I'll take it, Father. The voice of Elijah, and that is why he has brought you. That is why he showed me all that he showed me. And that you will not be brought down by anything. Hallelujah. I received the word of the Lord, Sister Maxine. Thank you. Many people don't understand why I work so hard night and day. I mean, very few people have a thousand sermons on their YouTube channel. I've written 23 books, and it's always been because in the back of my mind, I felt like I would leave life early because of this infection. But I received the word of the Lord. I'm believing God that uh, there's much more work to do. I want you to pray for God to open a door. I want to build a TV studio here in our town. Not television, I'm sorry, a production studio so that we can get professional 30-minute videos out to TV stations across the world. God, amen. God's got a lot of work for us to do. Brother Eric and then Sister L, and then we'll be gone for the day. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. First off, again, thank you for everything that you do. Thank I want you, to Eric. encourage you to keep doing it. Now the second thing I'm gonna I'm gonna use your own words against you that you've been okay. teaching us. All right. Do not have a spirit of fear. Get Amen. that surgery. Okay. okay. You've been preaching to us. Don't have a spirit a uh, uh, a spirit of fear. True. You you've been you've been delaying, my friend. You're right. Get that surgery. Your, get that surgery done, because. You've gone on so long that yes, there are there are certain infections that antibiotics will not cure. You are to the point now that the only way to, to get that infection done is to cut it out. You're right. So and so do not have a spirit of fear. You have our support. Okay. Thank you. And Eric. we will we will maintain we will maintain if you're off the air for a month, two months. I mean, we'll we'll be on Amen. you. But do not, do not delay. Please do not delay. The third I received thing is, it. When you said, you, the third thing, when you said the hair was half to go, I thought, oh my God, not the hair. But, <laughs> but we, know that you sleep, we know you sleep with a mold on, so. Well, I'm That's true. Hair, it'll come I'll, back. I'll have to find me a toupee. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eric, God, I receive you know, it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm setting you protein, so 
Oh, I know, and I loved it. I got it. Thank you. It's so wonderful. Thank you. I love it. It's in my refrigerator right now. And you know, somebody, Julie just said something in the chat that I agree with. She said he does not have to be seen to teach. We just need to hear. So yeah, I can definitely do audio teaching. I don't, I don't, I'm, you don't want to see me with no hair. Trust me. But um, <laughs> praise God, that's a great idea. All right. And Brother Eric, I take that correction just like Sister Kelly Robinson just took her correction. Amen. Amen. Sister L, God bless you, my sweet darling friend. Hello, it's Ellie. Ellie, I'm sorry. Ellie. Oh, Hello, there's Ellie. Yes. Yeah. Y'all, she is a warrior, I tell you. I keep up with you. <laughs> All right. I just wanted to say a quick prayer. Thank um, you. So let me just do that. But I wanted Thank to you, kind Father. of ease into the worship for the Lord. So I am the Lord that he led thee. I am the Lord thy healer. Oh, yes. I come to set your diseases free. I am the Lord thy healer. Oh, Sharamasi, Haramasi. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father God. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Lord, I thank you for the blood of Christ. I yes. thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for this powerful man of God, thank Shane you, Barn. Lord. Professor thank you, Toto. Lord. Thank you, yes. Lord. <laughs> thank you for him. And right now, Lord God, I speak to the spirit realm of the of demonic. I speak to the spirit realm of the demonic realm and I bind your demonic power of ear infection. You have no authority. I cancel your assignment right now and I loose the Holy Spirit of power, yes. sound mind and love and physical strength. Holy Spirit come. I send forth ministering angels to Pastor Sean right now Shane, excuse me, Shane, right yes, now, yes. And I command that you do your ministering work. Hallelujah. And Holy Spirit, I pray that yes, you Father. will touch the hands of the surgeon, of the doctor to craftily do what he needs to do to fix this ear. I declare, yes. I decree Thank it, you, I seal it by the blood in the name of Jesus. Amen. I receive it, Ellie. I felt the touch of the Holy Ghost. Let's all just worship for a moment. I need the oh, I need the every hour. I need the oh, bless. Unmute everybody, Courtney. Me now, my Savior, I come. Would everybody sing with me? I need the old. I need. Every hour, every hour, I need Oh, bless me now. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come. To the Shabbat Shalom, everybody. God bless you. We love you all.